Hey everyone and welcome back. With the new DLC, a lot of changes, updates and new additions took place into the game including some minor quality of life updates as well. Some of them were informed and some of them were not. I wanted to make this video to inform you all about all the changes and additions that took place with the new DLC update. So without wasting much time, let's get on to the video. First up is the topic I had talked about in the DLC cast breakdown video particularly the older cars in this DLC fights. We are getting 10 new libraries for both the Banshee as well as the Kuruma. We were wondering why were they in the game files and uh, this is why. Some of the libraries are neat and good looking for these older cars. These are nearly 6 year old cars goddammit. Then the Toreader also has a new library. Even more so, the upper sum mark 2 kill count on the side fenders is the main attraction point of this new library. That's so freaking cool. Now this isn't released yet, so this is more of a drip feed content, we are not sure when this is going to be released. Next we have got 30 new wheels added into the game. Out of the total 30, 10 of them are locked behind the LS carmate's reputation system. So you gotta level up there in order to unlock these 10 new wheels. And also, over 200 new clothing items were added into the game. And if you were wondering where they were at, cause they are not seen in the usual clothes stores, they are found within the LS car meet area where a truck is parked with clothes outside. And literally almost all of them are locked behind the reputation thing like maybe 4 or 5 items are available and the rest of them are all locked. It's ridiculous at this point. And if you want to take a look into this new reputation points, the trade price unlocks and all those categories or the limits where they get unlocked at, they are broken down in detail in this particular post. Link is in the description if you guys want to check it out. Another upgrade that's limited to only the LS mod shop are the new low grip tires. That is the drift tires you can say are only available in the LS mod shops and only for the new DLC cars. It's not available for any of the older cars. You can equip these tires in the LS car mate mod shop only. It's kind of a bummer but it is what it is. Talking about the LS car mate. All the custom headlights that were previously only accessible in the arena workshops are now made available in the mod shop of the LS car meet as well. So now anyone can change their car headlight colors without having the need to own the arena. Good addition for the mod shop if you ask me. You can return and call personal vehicles instantly right to the car meet without you having to either go outside or drive up and down to the garages with different cars. Also, the spawning of your cars is like instant. Very helpful during car meets if you want to show off like multiple cars. Although, keep in mind, there's a small cooldown as well. The ability to host these private car meets will only be available after you reach a certain level, that is the level 20 in the reputation. And also, it is going to be costing you $50,000 to host a car meet. So make sure you have a good bank balance as well. There's also freaking 32 car parking spaces in the LS car meet area for you and the entire lobby of players. Literally everyone in the session can come here all at the same time. Ha! Huh, freaking crazy, right? Moving on to the outside. If you were tired of scrolling through the multiple radio stations earlier, now you can edit the radio wheel and choose only the ones you want to have, like favorite radio stations. Or you can remove all of them and have the radio off, if that is what you like. You can access this in the inventory of the interaction menu and change however you like them. There's also the option to change the media player too. The new music player is actually being locked behind a free mode task of collecting the USB media sticks. Now I've already covered this in the previous video where I've shown all the locations you can find them at. You can also collect the Moody Man's media stick which is found in his white bravado gauntlet that spawns in the car meet with its boot open, as shown right here in the video. One of the best updates they have done in this DLC is the changes to the spawn locations of our personal aircrafts. 
Now the personal aircrafts or the helicopters spawn right next to us wherever we are. Just take a look at this. The freaking jet spawned right next to me. It was a pain earlier when we had to return our personal vehicles and call the personal aircrafts as we had to again travel the distance to reach our aircrafts after calling them. So this is a really good move. Now this is actually bad if you have like a bigger aircraft like the Bambushka or the Alkanos. So yeah, kind of an advantage as well as a disadvantage right there. You gotta be careful when you call in those bigger aircrafts. Make sure you are in an open space. With this DLC, there were three new vehicle options that have been added to the interaction menu that allows players to control the vehicle's stance, the hydraulics and the vehicle roof options. Now note that only the selected cars have these options, but still it's a good addition as it's useful for car needs. You can raise or lower the car with the stance option. You can play with the hydraulics on cars that are equipped with this feature and you can also lower and raise the roofs on convertible cars. Really a good feature that's been added into the game. The hydraulics didn't work on the slam truck though, if any of you were wondering. Next, the daily objectives have been updated with a lot of new ones being added into the list. This is also a good change as well. And then there's mentioning of the new daily collectibles that were added but I couldn't seem to find it anywhere including the path they have mentioned in. All I could find was the treasure hunt collectibles which is actually that of the Cairo Perico one. So need to wait on this to check it out. New masks were added but it wasn't mentioned anywhere. So if you are interested in those you can go and check them out as well. Up next, we have one new hairstyle that was added for both of the male and female characters. Just one was added and uh, it would have been better if it was, you know, more number of them. But this is all we are getting. Now moving on to the AutoShop business property updates. A minor thing that I appreciated a lot was the snacks being available in the AutoShop. Along with that, the take all option is even better. This along with the green juice upstairs makes it, easier for, makes it easier for players doing those new robbery missions as we can regenerate full health and stack up on snacks before starting the missions. Regarding the auto shops, well, it's just like how I had said earlier, it's a good business in the front but on the back you can do all the types of robbery missions or the mini heists you can say. Now there are a total of 8 robbery missions but only 6 of them have been released as of now. Two of them are drip feed content. I haven't played all of them yet but you know just tried one of them and I gotta say it's a pain for solo players. I actually give a thumbs down for how Rockstar has made these particular missions. Also no personal vehicles can be used. What kind of ridiculous logic is that? Why would I want to drive this stupid normal car when I could have taken the armored Kuruma? I mean we have saved the world from World War 3, we have done the bank heist, we have literally done so many of those heists and for this, for some reason, we can't use our personal vehicles. Come on Rockstar, I disliked it right away. Then with the auto shop's business, it's actually fairly simple. All you gotta do is perform the set task which is all laid out to you, kinda similar like the import export but this has got certain requirements. Once done you get two options, you can choose to either deliver it yourself or let one of the staff members deliver it. Now I don't know if this was done on purpose or not cause of the two times I chose the staff to deliver, I got paid less cause apparently they crashed on the way to deliver the car. Now, if you deliver it to yourself, you get full money. But if either of those staff does it, then you lose money. How stupid is that? So what exactly do they even do? Because literally I am the one doing every single work. Why did I pay freaking $800,000 for these two fools if I myself have to do all of the work in this business? This whole business thing looks more like a time waster in my opinion. Of course, you get a little extra cash in game for completing this, but still, I hope you get my point. Finally, 
some of you had doubts for the exotic exports thing within the auto shop this will only be available once you complete one of the robbery contracts until then it is actually locked once done the list becomes available on the wall of your living quarters the list updates every single day you gotta steal these cars and deliver when you are in free roam i'm not sure how some of these sports or the supercars will be spawning in free roam but that is how it is also there's a bonus for completing the full list so for some reason if you want to spend like your entire day roaming around the map you know trying to get these cars you can do that for a little bonus apart from these there was a lot of fixes that has taken place so yeah good dlc update overall till now let's see what more awaits us in the upcoming days all right everyone that's it for this video do drop the video a like and subscribe if you haven't already thank you all and have a good day